Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another one of my charging site reviews uh, kind of in absentia. This one is actually for the ChargePoint uh, charger in Red Bluff. Now this is a site that's actually been on for a very long time. I've, I've been there several different times uh, charging up, like I said, doing local errands, things like that. It's a very useful charger and it's kind of ideally located, at least for what I do uh, in Northern California. Now it, it's three uh, 50 kilowatt tritium chargers, which aren't the most useful. And then a, a, a couple of uh, level two AC chargers, including also some Tesla destination chargers that are on site. Uh, but I haven't checked really with their availability because they're actually located at the motel that's on site. Uh, so you, you know, you might need to or want to pay be patronizing that motel before you actually uh, use a free service like a Tesla destination charger with an adapter or however it is you might interface with it. Sort of a key uh, aspect of the importance of that charging site where it's located, it's on a junction of uh, Interstate 5 and Highway 36 and so like I said it's, it's going to see a lot of traffic in Northern California and it's going to support a lot of travel both north and south and as well as east and west. Let's just jump right into a site score. All right, so for accessibility, I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. I, I, I was on the fence about this because it actually is kind of a difficult charger to navigate to, but it's proximity to the freeway. It's really, really close. So you're basically off the freeway and you're just a block or so over and you're at this charger. And like I said, it's surrounded by gas stations anyway, so you're really looking at roughly the same level of convenience as those other gas stations that are commonly frequented as well. It's just a little bit harder to get to because it's actually in a parking lot where a lot of people don't necessarily associate uh, refueling with, uh, with the parking lot behind restaurants, right? So uh, it's kind of hard to get to, but otherwise, yeah, like I said, it's convenient convenient it's just off the freeway as long as you sort of know your your way around the area it's it's not that hard to get to uh, so the only reason it's getting a 9 out of 10 for access and getting a point deducted is because there's no real facilities for uh, full pull through parking and uh, you know, again, people in Northern California, they tend to tow trailers. They, they you know, that's not a, a place that facilitates that. It's gonna be really difficult to try and navigate uh, with a trailer. You're gonna to have to detach uh, and then pull in and charge. And so it's a little bit less convenient that way. So it's only getting a nine out of 10 for access. For amenities, it's going to get an eight out of 10. And the reason for that is, again, there's no coverings to the charger. It, it is sheltered somewhat because of the trees uh, but yeah you really need something to cover those chargers so they're not getting blasted by the the evening sun uh, you know the, the interface gets really really hot during summertime red bluff gets really really hot during summertime and those tritium chargers just don't uh, do well in the heat even if they did hold up fine you shouldn't have to be parked in full sun during summertime in 105 to 110 degree temperatures while you're trying to charge your car. There, there should at least be some sort of covering, some sort of canopy, uh, just to provide some shading. And then of course in winter it will snow and you will get sleet and things like that. So again, you, you want to protect from that. So outside of that though, the only other reason it's getting a point knocked off, it doesn't really have the sort of traditional travel services that you'd expect at a gas station you're close to gas stations but they're not really on site so it's it's one thing you know to walk over to the McDonald's or one of the restaurants that's around and sit down and eat while you're charging it's another to try to to multitask by charging your car and accessing those types of travel services that you would have on site at say a gas station or a convenience store but it does have things like a dog park and whatnot to walk your pets around and things like that as well so it, it's not as though it's devoid of uh, amenities it's just you have to make sure that it really aligns with what your expectations are for the stop but otherwise it's getting an 8 out of 10 for amenities for site concentration there are three DC fast chargers I consider that just dead average in addition there are two level 2 chargers and then of course like I said there are also the Tesla destination chargers which uh, I would only really access if you're actually spending the night at the motel uh, but still that puts it in 
my opinion, at sort of just dead average, nothing special, uh, but you know, it, it's still a very useful, serviceable site. Even now, three chargers on site, you're likely to be able to access a DC fast charger when you arrive. So uh, access shouldn't be an issue uh, because of the, the number of chargers there. Three chargers should be adequate. Uh, but again, adequate is not great or compelling. We are talking about a junction between Highway 36 and Interstate 5, a very highly trafficked corridor. Uh, so yeah, three chargers, we really wanna see more than that, but five out of 10 for site concentration. And in terms of location, again, this is a really important site. I, I pegged it at nine out of 10, and part of it is, you know, these rural communities need uh, charging support. Even if the uh, current EV ownership in rural communities isn't as high, uh, knowing that you have these chargers locally, it makes a lot of these smaller battery vehicles that wouldn't otherwise be viable in these areas now a possibility for people to own and the barrier to ownership for them is much lower. So in Northern California, it's not uncommon to have to drive 40, 50, 60 miles to get groceries uh, each way, right? So some of these uh, smaller battery, uh, shorter range EVs, they just aren't viable unless you had something like a DC fast charger where people could go buy their groceries, do their shopping, charge up, and still be able to make it home. Uh, and so it's really important to have these uh, for that reason. It's also an intersection between Highway 36, uh, a scenic travel route east and west in, in uh, California, as well as Interstate 5, which is you know just a main thoroughfare. So having those chargers at that location it's really important because it's going to give people the ability to move around uh, both uh, north and south and east and west in California in Northern California and it helps to bridge some pretty long gaps in, in Northern California along I-5 and add some redundancy uh, the Electrify America chargers are pretty well spaced but this adds even more onto that giving more options especially when the weather is bad or it, you know like I said if you're just going a different direction direction uh, and, and you want an alternative place to charge uh, so I it's getting a 9 out of 10 for location and then for speed these are the 50 kilowatt tritium chargers that charge point has historically used and I would really like to see ChargePoint start to use more of their ChargePoint Express 250 chargers, especially in like that 125 kilowatt configuration. Um, but you know, 50 kilowatts, just dead average. It's five out of 10 for speed. It's nothing special. It works for a lot of the smaller battery, shorter range EVs, and it works for uh, 30 to 40 to maybe hour long stops. Uh, but outside of that, we really need to, especially along these travel corridors, to, we need to start seeing some faster chargers. So it's only getting a five out of 10 for speed. And so that brings us to a total site score of 36 out of 50. So it's at strong C. Um, you know, I think a lot of that is owed to just how important of a site it is for travel and mobility. Again, it helps that there's a third charger there, but this could easily be a B site. It, it just has a lot of opportunities to, with faster chargers and just maybe full pull through uh, access uh, if it was configured slightly differently. I, I realize that some, some restrictions probably within the lease agreements and whatnot, but it has the potential to be a very, very very strong site, like I said, even just with faster charging. Uh, one thing of note too is that this is a site where ChargePoint has been using a battery, a grid tied battery system, much like the uh, Electrify America and Anderson, except instead of using a Tesla power pack, this is actually using a different brand of battery backup system. So it's also nice to see sort of that diversity, uh, not just within the chargers and the, and the site layouts and, and and uh, you know, just options in terms of where to stop, but also in terms of the, the hardware, the uh, like the grid tie battery system hardware that's being used to support these chargers. I also reviewed a uh, EVgo charger way back in the day that was using Second Life BMW i3 batteries to offset uh, demand charges. So it's really cool to see these different options right for for grid type batteries uh, that will offset the cost for these DC fast chargers and hopefully uh, 
help them proliferate and remain cheap or cheaper than they currently are uh, to use. So I'd love to hear what you think. Have you had an opportunity to use this charge point site before? Uh, what do you think of the tritium chargers or charge points different style of grid tie uh, battery backup system that they used for this site? Uh, if you enjoyed these videos, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and thank you for watching.